Hello again, I'm Paul Dewin with AEA Technology Incorporated. In this next video segment, we'll concentrate on testing coaxial cables using our E2020 step TDRs. The TDRs have an impedance range from 0 to 1000 ohms. They can test cables with an impedance from 40 to 120 ohms and remain within their accurate specifications. The TDRs can test any type of coax from the tiniest coaxes used in medical probes to huge diameter broadcast tower feed lines. We'll be testing some 50 and 75 ohm coax cables, covering the physical structure and common faults that govern the reflections shown in the traces. First step is connecting the cable under test. If your TDR's connector is an exact match, female to male for the connector on the cable, you can connect directly to the E2020 TDR. Since our TDRs have no dead zone on any range setting, you'll not be blinded to the near end of the cable. If the fault is an open, short, or other issue right here in the connector, that's where the trace will show it, and we have an example of that later. If you do not have an exact match in the connector, that's not an issue. Any adapters like these can be employed, or a test lead with an adapter can be used. The test lead is highly recommended if you're stepping up to a heavier, larger coax from a smaller connector like the BNC or F style on the TDR. This prevents excessive strain on the TDR's connector. While an impedance match test lead is best, a mismatch test lead can be used with our step TDRs. Finally, if you do not have the correct adapter or the cable to be tested is not connectorized, you can use the alligator clip leads we include with all of our E2020 series TDRs. Note the traces spike as the signal reflects from the 100 ohm alligator clips lead and clip separation. Always keep these leads and clips as close as possible to reduce this reflection. Also, connect the red clip to the center conductor and black to the shield. TDRs are not polarity sensitive, but it's best to keep the center conductors and shields between the TDR's test port and cable aligned. Next, we'll test some 50 ohm coaxes. The first is a portable antenna's feed line that's been showing an intermittent high VSWR. Selecting the correct cable type will set the Z0 and velocity factor. Getting the velocity factor correct is crucial to obtaining the correct distances on the cable. There is more information on both impedance and velocity factor in video 2, How TDRs Work, and video 4, the E2020 TDRs menus. With the cable type set, adjust the Z scale to center the trace and the range to view the end of the cable. In this case, a dipole antenna, which appears as an open. Initially, the cable looks normal, but since this is an intermittent issue, I'll flex the cable at different points to see if the fault shows. Flex points at connections are the prime suspects for cable breaks. There it is, going open, right at the BNC connector. Replacing the BNC connector should put this cable and antenna back in service. Next, we'll test the length of RG58 coax to show the importance of measuring dribble up. Dribble up in step TDRs is the addition of the cable's DC loop resistance to the impedance over the length of the cable. As shown in this diagram, the loop resistance is the total DC resistance of the center conductor and the shield of a cable as measured at one end with a zero ohm short at the other end. In the case of coax cables, most of the resistance is generally in the center conductor. The E2020 TDR does not need the short at the cable's far end to show the loop resistance. And the loop resistance can be measured using the delta reading between the two cursors set at marked distances. For example, if the dribble up is consistent over the cable's length, measure the longest reasonable distance that divides evenly into the cable's 1,000 foot specification. In this example, we use 50 feet. The difference in impedance readings between cursor 1 and cursor 2 is 8.2 ohms. That's the DC loop resistance for this section of coax. Now compute the number of measured sections in the 1,000 foot specification. It's 20 for this example. And multiply that by the reading of 8.2 ohms. The result should be close to the manufacturer's specification. In this case, it's not. And this piece of coax is junk even though it does not show any serious faults. Coax cable's impedance can be dead on, but if its loop resistance is too high, it usually indicates poor quality center conductor or shield materials, which attenuates their signals. 
Also, you will see with the next coax we test, the smaller the coax's diameter, the higher the loop resistance, and the more pronounced the dribble up in the trace. The cable attached now is RG174, with a small fault at about 45 feet, or 13.7 meters. This is a manufactured fault to show the sensitivity of our E2020 step TDRs. Also note the dramatic dribble up. With this small diameter cable, this high loop resistance is normal. The fault is a short cut in the shield and a 2 ohm resistor connecting the two shield sections, as shown here. This fault shows up well both in normal impedance trace mode and in microfault locating mode, as shown by the sharp upward step and indicated by the cursor. Returning to the TDR trace, you can still clearly see the fault. This trace is similar to what a series resistive fault and a coax connection would look like. A step up in resistance that never returns to normal impedance. Those type of faults are caused by corrosion, dirt, or contaminants getting into the connectors and on the conducting surfaces. And not all coax matches its label's impedance. A small step up or down at a connection can also mean the two coax cables have slightly different impedances. If this were a large step up or down, it could indicate two mismatch impedance cables are connected together, the infamous rookie mistake. Our next test will be a 75 ohm coax with small crimp or crush spots. In this case, the shield has been pressed closer to the center conductor in a very small spot. The crimp is not visible in the normal trace mode, but highly obvious in the E2020 TDR's microfault locating mode for kinks. Even small kinks as these can affect high bandwidth performance. In our last test, we'll demonstrate what water or even a little moisture looks like in a coax cable. Our victim cable has a barrel connector at 10 feet, or about 3 meters, indicated by cursor 2, and a small section with the shield cut open laterally, indicated by cursor 1. The center conductor is exposed and wrapped in material to hold moisture thusly. Wet coax will vary in appearance, but will always be an erratic downward excursion in impedance. Additionally, the velocity factor in wet cable changes to some unknown value, so measured distances in or after water cannot be trusted. This concludes our segment on testing coaxial cables. Once again, thank you for watching, and we hope this video was informative. For more videos in this series, please visit our website at www.aatechnology.com. For a complete list of their links, or if you have any questions, please contact us at the number shown below to speak to a sales associate or technical representative.